Hello everyone, welcome back to Demet channel for trending political stories and economic related issues and anything else that's just trending in Zambia. Make sure you follow me for all those updates and uh, if you are new to my channel, please like and subscribe and you can also check out my channel profile and uh, choose uh, videos from the playlist that best suit your interests. With that said, let's jump right into it. So here, here's the thing. Let's talk. I'm going to talk about three things. First of all, I want to talk about Miles Sampa. Now, many of you know, Miles served as mayor of, of this beautiful city for a time. And there was a time him and I was, you know, we're just sort of buddy, buddy. I wouldn't say we were friends, friends. We were just hanging out by virtue of the fact that, you know, he served as mayor. And, and I've got a thing for local government, you know, because of the nature of the work that I do. Invariably, I will be involved with people like that because lots of work, the, 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 the vast majority of the work that I do, uh, centers around issues of land and property and blah 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 blah. So I, I usually get involved with mayors, and what I mean by that is that I talk to them on a regular. The current mayor of Lusaka now, many of you don't know, is actually my niece. You know, her and I went to school together. We were in the same class together. Her, my wife, and 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 myself, we went to the same uh, school. Went to the, we were in the same class, you know. And uh, so I got a thing. My father served as mayor once, so so the mayor the, the the mayorship is something that I'm very familiar with. So when he was mayor, you know, him and I used to do a couple of things together and and stuff, and we we kind of you know we kind of became friends. I wouldn't say we were buddy buddy, but we were sort of friends. You know, we'd have a meal every so often and and talk and, and exchange ideas and things. And um, the rift the rift happened. Well, the cracks in our so-called friendship began to happen when he was mayor he had come here to Simosan, this area and he was touring this area in the company of Kadas, pf Kadas. now you gotta remember this was during the time of the npf the notorious patriotic front they were stellar barbaric bunch of brutes and you know he was touring the area and he came through the alleyway of our building you know if you're familiar with Simosan building in the back alley of Simosan, um you know we had applied to the council we wanted to secure the back because all the garbage that this building generates, we used to take in the back and then we would pay, we would pay, pay an independent garbage collection company 10,000 kwacha every month to come and collect the garbage from the back alley. And this was garbage that was largely generated by our building. So what we did was we applied to the council and asked the council if they would give us the permission to block off our alley space so that we make sure that all the garbage we pay for comes from our building. Because if we if we left it open, everybody in this area would bring their garbage because they they knew oh my wife's paying ten thousand kwacha per month to collect garbage so you can just throw it in Simon's alley because you know he pays ten thousand bucks every month to collect garbage so we applied to the council and asked the council could you give us permission to seal it off with gates on both sides so that we are in control of what happens in the back in terms of garbage collection the council granted us permission so this one particular day Miles was in the back with his kadas. And one of the Kadas, who had an interest in the alley, said to Miles, uh, you know, Mwewa shouldn't put these gates here. He should leave this open. And, and Miles, instead of asking me, he made a decision right there and then. And it's on record. It's on video. He says, yeah, yeah, but I'm going to tell gates. You know, we're going to tell Mwewa to remove these gates and this space should be open. The moment the Kadas said to Miles, you know, these gates should go. I knew what they meant and what they wanted. They wanted that space to use it for a bus station. So I, you know, Miles wrote me a letter from the council because he was mayor at the time. And he said to me, well, you need to remove those gates. So I referred to the letters that we had written to the council many, many years ago. And we said, look, we didn't just put up the gates. We asked the council if we could put up the gates and they gave us permission to do it. And he said, no, I know, but you know, things have changed and you know, I'm the mayor now and you, you have to remove those gates. And then on top of that, we had built some toilets in the back of the alley and again we had asked council permission to do this they granted us permission the reason we built those toilets was because toilets in and around this area are very very difficult to find i mean there's so many people there aren't enough toilets yes yes they were fee paying toilets but they were toilets nonetheless miles decides and, and this was fine i mean we didn't have any qualms with this miles said no these toilets you shouldn't build these toilets so i said to miles miles if you want to remove the toilets i will i will remove the toilets myself but as far as the gates are concerned 
I'm going to need you to really help me with the gates because if we leave the back alley open, it's going to leave us exposed and vulnerable to all types of vices, and we will not be able to control the garbage collection mechanism in the alley. We will be burdened with everyone in this area who will start bringing their garbage, and we will be paying 10,000 kwacha per month. None of those people are going to pay any money because they're going to know, they know that whatever garbage is brought in the alley, Mwewa is going to pay for that garbage. So I said to Miles, Miles, I'll demolish the toilets, but please help me keep the gates. Miles said no to both. He said, no, remove the gates. And I know you've told me that you're going to demolish them, uh, the toilets, but I'm going to send counsel to demolish. He brought in the bulldozers and the trucks and the thingies, and they destroyed, I think it was over 150,000 uh, kwacha worth of uh, work that we had put in there, you know. And again, as far as the toilets are concerned, that was fine, you know, because that space wasn't mine to begin with. You know, we only did it because we wanted to secure the back. But I, what I took exception to was the fact, I mean, I had told Miles I would get rid of them, you know, and I gave him my word. I said, look, I'll, I'll do it. And he said, no, 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 the council has to do it. So when they came and demolished the back, P.F. Kades came and they descended uh, uh, on the alley. All the material, all the, the, the steel, all the beam, uh, not the beams, the, the frame, the doors, everything. The metal doors, they, the cutters just swept it up. They just took everything. And they threatened me in the process. They said, And yet, I was, we were the ones that paid for that. Okay? So, um, you know, that, that happened. And, and I remember when they came to demolish the toilets, people were expecting me to, to complain and moan. I did none of that. In fact, if anything, I went on record on my social media. And I said, um, I support the mayor. I think the mayor is is doing his job and you know I support him I was not an opposite but behind closed doors in private I went to see him at the uh, Lusaka City Council I went to see him there and I and I begged miles in his office I said miles you're not going to be there to hold my hands when that alley becomes a bus station because in miles mind he was saying no what we want is we want the alley to be a uh, free of glata so that it can be used as a, a pathway a back way for vehicles to to drive through so that we can decongest the, the CBT. I said, Miles, you're just talking <laughs> gibberish. You're, what you're saying and what's going to happen on the ground are two different things. What you're talking about is not going to happen. What's going to happen is if you remove the gates, all the Kadas are going to descend in the alley, to, they're going to descend on the alley, and, and they will take control of the alley, and I will have no say so. In fact, they will even say to me, Well, your garbage, take it somewhere else, don't bring it here. Miles said, no, I'm going to take care of that. Well, lo and behold, everything Miles said didn't happen. Everything I said happened. So, if you're fia, fia pita, makadas vaisa, vajte fia mua, you know, and all that stuff. Secondly, uh, Miles wanted to put a billboard, uh, some G. Rutherford. You know, he, there's this billboard company, I think it's called G. Rutherford. You know, they got into some sicko deal with, my, uh, with Miles. And um, Miles says to me, he says, oh, I need to put a billboard in front of Simoson. I said, I said, why? He said, no, I just need to put uh, this billboard. I have to put my face there yeah, so that uh, the people know what we're doing. So reluctantly, reluctantly, I, and, and you know, he put me on the spot because what he did was, uh, I was sitting in my office and then my secretary comes to me and says, oh, uh, the mayor is here. He's downstairs and he wants to talk to you. So, you know, naturally, I, I get up out of the office, I go downstairs, I find Miles standing in front of Simoson, and with this woman, a woman I didn't even know who she was, but I know she was from G. Rutherford, you know the guys that do the billboards, and incidentally, there are too many billboards in town from by G. Rutherford, G. Rutherford puts billboards everywhere. He blocks everything, everywhere. It shouldn't be that way. If you go to Osaka Girls, Osaka Boys, there are billboards, G. Rutherford billboards lined all across uh, uh, Osaka Girls, blocks the beauty, blocks the beauty and the view of Lusaka girls. So anyway, um, uh, so Miles says to me, he says, uh, uh, I want to put a billboard here. So I said to him, I said, well, that's going to block the view. Not that Simoson is pretty. We know, we know. But we've got a plan to make Simoson beautiful. I know Simoson's ugly. That's fine. Okay. But it's paid for. It's debt free if it's any consolation. So I know it's ugly. Okay. So because some of you are going to start saying, hey, but if they block it, yeah, Simoson is just ugly. So it's okay if they block. Yeah, well, it's fine for you to say. So, um, he says to me, he says, no, we need to put a billboard here. And uh, I, put, I need to put my face there so that people know what we're, what we're doing. Reluctant, and I could see he put me on the spot, you know. And I said to him, I said, okay, you know, Miles, all right. But, but, but I must let you know that, you know, this is highly irregular. He said, no, don't worry, it'll be okay. The very next day, they put a billboard right in front of Simoson. They blocked the building. 
The, the, the day after that, he calls me again. He phones me again. <laughs> you know that old saying, if you give someone an inch, they take a mile? Literally, they take a mile. <laughs> so Miles calls me again and he says, well, you know that billboard we put there? We need another one. We need to put a, another one there for, for ECL. Because it will look bad if I'm there, but my boss is not there. He used to refer to ECL as my boss. You know, this was during the, the PF time. So effectively, what Miles wanted to do, he wanted to put two huge billboards blocking Simosan. So on the second one, I said to him, I said, Miles, don't do that, okay? I know you want to please the boss, but don't, don't do that because that's, you're blocking the building, you know, and that's, that's not good. And because in the future, when we beautify it, people are not going to be able to see it. No, Mwewa, just we put another one there. I insisted. On that one, he gave in. He said, okay, I won't put another one there at all. So fast forward to a few months ago, I'm trying to give you context. I'm giving you the backdrop of why Miles Sampa and I are where we are today. So uh, fast forward to a few weeks ago, months ago, remember there was a controversy about the columns of Society House. Remember that? Uh, the columns of Society House. Tell me in the comments. Do you remember that? Tell me if you remember that. Just say that in the comments if you remember that controversy, because ultimately Society House was even shut down you know, because there was a lot of compromise in terms of the construction and whoever the contractor was. And incidentally, I must tell you, Society House, the, the, the issue of the contractor who did that work is a huge scandal that nobody's talking about. That is massive. I mean, the point where you have an entire building shut down that is not operational, thousands of jobs that were lost, and the contractor, whoever the, the contractor was, is not being named, not being talked about. That is scandalous. Okay, scandalous. So anyway, um, Miles posted that he said, he said, Society House should be demolished. Is there another building in town that you, you know that should be demolished? Of course, he was talking about Simonson. Simonson has always faced that, that issue. People think that the building is unsafe. The building is just old. <laughs> That's all it is. It's just old. It's just an old building. Yes, it needs an uplift. Yes, it needs it needs a bit of a paint job, but it's just old. Old, honey. But Miles went ahead and he implied that Simoson should be demolished. Now here's my here that, that is where the rift between him and I occurred. Because I felt that if you really had something to say and you really wanted to do something, why didn't you do it when you were mayor? I've always I've always wondered that. You know, I mean he made these comments and these statements after he left the, the mayorship. And my, my question, my query, my question is, well, if you really felt that way, why didn't you do that when you were mayor? And, and, and as far as demolishing, and this talk has always, it's always been there, and as far as demolishing Simoson is concerned, there has never been one, it's one structural integral compromise when it comes to this building, not one. We've never had one incident of anything at this building. The only issue about Simoson is it's just old and it's just ugly. It doesn't look as pretty as, as other buildings. But I always tell you, and I must always emphasize this, it's ugly, but it's paid for, it's debt-free, zero Kongole, zero Kongole, And I love that. I love saying that. Anyway, so I, I took offense. I was very, not hurt, I was disappointed that Miles would make such a, such a suggestion especially given the fact that, you know, he, he was mayor and he, he never ever said anything like that, but he chose to say it after he left. So now here it is, uh, him and I, we don't really speak. We, I mean, not that we were enemies because like I said, we were not friends, friends. We were just sort of, you know, never so often would, would bump into each other. I mean, I, I would never go over to, to his house uninvited, you know, or, or just, just hang out. It was always for a purpose. There was always a reason. He's never been to my house. I've never said to Miles, hey, Miles, come over to the house. He's been to my office many, many times. So basically, that's where the rift occurred. And, and, and once that happened, you know, I, I really decided that there, there was nothing here. I mean, it's, it's just all fluff, you know. And then now he has decided to sue me for defamation. Now, here's the thing. First of all, and then Miles says, he says, he says, I have served he gave me six or seven days to apologize, which I will not do that, okay? I, I'm not doing that, and, and, and you'll hear the reasons in court. I'm not apologizing to him. Are you kidding? What am I, Alice in Wonderland? I'm not doing that, 
Okay, so he says to me, he says, you got six days. If you don't apologize in six days, we're going to sue. I said, go ahead, do that. So now, this is what I find funny, is that he goes on his social media, and then he shows the court summons, or whatever it is, but he doesn't serve it to me. I mean, my office is here. I don't, my secretary will give me every single document that comes from me. As soon as it hits here, she hands it to me. And she'll always say, sir, you've got this document. Well, I first saw the whatever that court document is on his page, but I haven't seen it here in my office. I mean, I find it curious that Miles is so, <laughs> I don't know, I don't know what to say. I think he's so self-absorbed that he would, he would rather first, he would first, he, he would rather first show his audience a court document than serve it to me first. Okay, so, and, and, then, and then he says he's going to sue for 100 million kwacha. First of all, let's be clear, I don't have 100 million kwacha stuffed down my pants right now, sorry to say. Okay, I don't have it in cash. Second of all, Miles doesn't have 100 million kwacha stuffed down his pants right now, sorry to say. So it is outlandish, it's a bit disingenuous, it's very ambitious, extremely ambitious for Miles to suggest, yeah, well, if you don't apologize, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take you for all your worth and uh, you're going to have to pay $100 million. Miles, you need to pull your head out of the clouds, live in the real world, and face reality. Nobody's going to give you $100 million bucks, okay? Let's just be clear, all right? You don't, if you don't have $100 million, where the hell am I going to get it from? So anyway, uh, here's, here's the thing. If, if, if indeed we do go to court, we're, we're going we're gonna to ride that horse once we get to that stable. Okay, let's just go ahead and say it that way. If indeed, let me say that again because I think that's important. If indeed we do go to court, we're going to ride.